Okay, so this is our the last week of class. You made it. Woohoo! And again, goal of this module five is just giving you like something that you can take with you out of this class, kind of showing like I understand dynamics and this is how I can apply it to something that I like. Or that you I is in the royal I. I don't know. So I updated based on like our conversations that we've had for this module five. I updated this module five in Google Classroom. Um, so today, today we're trying to do the homework part of module five, where you take a look at someone else's work. I find peer reviewing is the best way to find all the things wrong with my own work. Because when I look at someone else's, like if I look at someone else's paper or their PowerPoint and I see something that kind of bugs me, like, oh, you didn't explain this well enough. Usually when I look at my own work, I also didn't explain like the same general idea, the same, uh, the thing that bugs me the most is like what pops out. So that's today, peer reviewing that kind of homework. And then on Wednesday, the goal is submit like an updated kind of rough draft of your project, whether that's a PowerPoint or a Jupyter notebook, but put something up into this uh, module five like project folder. Main thing is like if I'm going to update, if I'm going to add like a project in here, so let's say I want to add a Jupyter notebook in here. Um, and I've got so many, so let's go into, yeah, I'll, I'll add like my, uh, so I could say file upload, and then I'm gonna add something from my work in Julia, let's see, in here, Julia Learning. So I'll just add, I think like day six, I'm going to put like a Jupyter notebook up in here. The file name right now is just day 06, which is not very helpful. It doesn't tell you who made that assignment or where it came from, what it's doing. So I'll rename this. Right click, say rename. Make sure it's at least got like your last name, something like that. So Cooper is good. And then like double pendulum. Because this is a, a double pendulum notebook that I had made with uh, Julia. And that would be like how you can submit this. And because this is kind of a work in progress, maybe rename it again to say like rough double pendulum, like rough draft. If I want, like if there's multiple files that you want to share with someone, you could also add. You can make your own folder. Um, just call it like Cooper Project or, or your own. Like, obviously, don't call it Cooper Project because then someone would assume that that's my project. Then you could just put your file like in there. And that's fine. So something like that. And that's for like putting up a notebook. Notebooks, you can open up directly in the Google Drive folder. Uh, PowerPoint, same thing. Um, you can also scan and upload work. So that's today's goal. Get something that, that you can help, that someone can help like share and review for you and get some feedback on it. All right, when you're looking at someone else's project, these are kind of the questions, these are the questions that I usually ask about when I'm looking at someone else's work or when I'm like reviewing these kind of work for the, for the class. First thing is like, why? Like what, why, why is this being done? Is it, um, is it important? Is it interesting? Something new, something old? Like what, 
what's going on? Like, why, why do this? It doesn't have to be like I'm trying to change the world. It can just be like, this is something interesting that I noticed, and I want to know more about it. So I want to apply dynamics to squirrel mechanics or dynamics to yo-yos and that kind of thing. Is it important? Interesting? And then the next big thing is like, how is this being done? Especially at this stage where we're just looking at kind of rough drafts. Like, how are you going to do this? One is like, are, what forces are involved? How are those forces being accounted for? Like, are you taking um, something that stretches and assuming that it's a spring? Are you like looking at orbital mechanics with like big gravity changes, or is it just constant gravity kind of situations? So the big things there would be like, is there a free body diagram? Is there a kinetic diagram? Are you doing impulse momentum analysis? Are you doing work energy? Are you just doing F equals MA, like create like equation of motion? Something like that. So those are the big things to ask like at this first stage of this first stage of the review. Why are you doing it? Like what are you trying to do, I guess? And then how are you gonna do that? Those are the two things. That's what I think. What about you? What kind of maybe it would help to look at someone's project and then come up with some questions? Yeah, let's do that. So let's pair up and like you can pull up your project and, and share it with them or point, point to, you can add it to the Google Drive and then show them how to get there, show a partner or something how to get there. Well, it's, that's our first step today. Share it and then start reviewing, get some feedback on it.
if you're trying to create like the most torque, uh, then you want nine. You always want to move by towards ninety degrees. Oh, you want that. Oh, okay. But um, even if you're not, you, you're still creating torque. The only time you don't create torque is if it's uh, in line. Oh, so it's like if you're if you're holding if a wrench is out this way and you're pulling it like that, there's no torque. But even if I'm pulling it this way and down.
including the RS-7 transcranial system. So you're being paid for the R you just plugged in. So the R is that mounting point, like the initial mounting point for the yo-yo. Okay. Yeah. So if I wanted to mount a rack here, my L would be the distance from here to the center of that to the yo-yo? Well, if it's rotating this way, R is where they are, like on the edge of the chip. Like if you want to mount them on the side, like the hole. Like if you mount them on the hole, then it's just the width of the chip. Okay. So if you want to mount them like top and bottom, maybe R would be, then you might lose symmetry. So my idea, yeah, that was, I was thinking about losing symmetry earlier. So that was my idea was to mount them basically the same length as up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or is that the wrong R? Because this is the actual location. No, that should work. I mean, as long as um, as long as it's rotating like this way, right? Right. Uh, then R is just that distance, like from the center to to where the plug where it's mounted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I could still have an L if I wanted to use the full length of the ankle. I still have an L for the yo-yo to use the ankle point as a as a mounting point for the. the yeah, because it's just it's that that big R is giving you the initial radius of your yo-yo. Got it. Okay. So as long as it's non-zero, then it will have some like centrifugal force pushing it off. And then my I, if I just change the curve to this right here to equal I1 plus I2. Yeah, so it'll be I1. I1 is like the bow, like the hull. The pitch deflector. Yeah. And then I2 is going to be whatever rotation of that pitch deflector, the thing on top, <coughs> plus the mass of it times distance squared. Right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, if anybody doesn't have a, a, a mass distance problem, the axis of rotation then, or is it? Yeah, from axis of rotation. So it exists just from here. Yeah. From here to here. Yep. And then this at this point is just distance squared here. Okay. So you are moving center mass up. Well, so it's going to be the center mass is going to be screwed up anyway because the mass of the feature structure does not have any inertial slope to the mass of the hull. Right. So center of mass of the bow is like almost like here. Center of the hole, right? Right. Well, yeah. Like so not, it, it'd be a little off center because I mean it's a little, but but yeah, right. you can just ignore that for now. Um, so what you can do is say the thing's going to rotate around the center of the hole, but then it also has that the structure on top mm -hmm. that has a moment of inertia plus that offset. Okay. And keep the right like whatever distance from this center to that. The yo-yos, I mean, technically the yo-yo could also have a moment of inertia, but R is so much bigger than that rotational speed that where it's really it's just m r squared for the bow. So I might just I might just keep this and just use the the length and height. To yeah. Simplify it as one as one big mass. Yep. Just to make it a little bit easier. But I was just trying to figure out like so if this is the uh, the desired axis of rotation and this is the center of mass distributed recently, how would that change the rotation? How would you calculate the point uh, of rotation? Yeah, that's good. So this is a, it's a parallel axis here, isn't it? Yeah, parallel axis. So here there's a question about like using oh we're back <laughs> using parallel axis theorem on like trying to combine moments of inertia uh, so this one is going to be like I1 is M and I'm just saying that these are like A and A and B and B like kind of squares that I'm adding together m1 a squared over 12 is it over 12 yeah yeah a squared so over 12 yeah for that square 
and this one I2 is M2 B squared over 12. So if I want to add those together, I, I can figure out like what is the average center of mass and then, then do that first. Um, R, C, O, M kind of combined is going to be somewhere in here, right? Like some distance. If I'm combining them. Yeah, about that. A oh, one half A? Oh, well, it's going to rotate. If it's in space, it's going to rotate around its center of mass, no matter what you do. Okay. Unless, otherwise, um, otherwise the thing is like jogging back and forth. Like, a, um, have you ever seen a fan where it loses a blade yeah. and how it rattles the whole house? Off, yeah, uh, you would, you'd end up doing the same thing, only now you're doing it with a ship with, with the huge mass and now the things like violently shaking so the easiest thing to do would just probably just consider it as like a square mass to go from there, or rectangular mass to go from there because if it's going to rotate around its own axis no matter what i do yeah no matter what you do like if some, if something once something is like free fl like flowing in the air like even whenever you throw something as soon as the all the constraints on it are gone the only thing it rotates around is its center of mass because okay. otherwise it takes like extra you need some applied torque in order to spin something that's not around its center of mass. Um, and in space, you don't have that unless you're like applying thrusters to like force it to rotate around something. Um, so that the center of mass of like C, you can take uh, like if I call this kind of the zero right of the if I call that like axis zero, then the center of mass C is going to be like uh, B over 2, M2, B over 2, um, right? M2 times B over 2 plus M1 A over 2, uh, or minus. Because I'm just trying to get average location right. there. So it's mass times distance divided by total mass. Like that. And that, that'll give me like the total position of that center of mass. But if M2 is a lot smaller than M1, then this RCOMC is basically going to be M, that negative M1 A over 2 over M1. So it just becomes that the center of mass is A1 over 2. That, that was my thought, at least initially. So then you're not doing um, parallel axis theorem on both because one's much smaller than the other. Well, that's why it seems it's like, it seems clear as up about like if if space is being rotated around whatever it would want to rotate around. So yeah. Bigger structure obviously will be somehow Yeah. Yeah. And now it's going to be uh, a over 2 plus b over 2 squared. Like if I want that total moment of inertia of just adding, adding something that's much lighter, but it is offset. So the distance maybe makes a difference because it's squared. 
but the mass is probably not changing like total center of mass of the, of the object. Yeah, that, that was, at least that was my thought about this, this kind of thing. So this part is our like parallel axis theorem. This is like I2 about its center of mass. And this one's I1 about its own center of mass. Yeah. But seeing that as you pointed out, it is probably a lot less than M1. Yeah. And and you could kind of at least for this kind of project, you could roughly estimate it. Like if you know total ship weight is uh and, seventy three thousand tons. All right, seventy three thousand tons, you could say like maybe it's one percent of that. Right. So one percent of seventy three thousand is going to be the 7,300, right? 7,300 tons, yeah. Still pretty big, but <laughs> but not like, not significant size. Yeah. Yeah, the main thing is, you know, M1 plus M2 has to equal total mass. So you can divide it up as like a percentage that way. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. 
do you need like uh, engine info of like RPM versus <coughs> power? Do you yeah, have that? I have. Um, they will get the crankshaft torque, but only one value right now because all the other ones can like uh, if they like put it on a dyno and get like the the curve. Yeah. Then uh, you have to be able to go in like those are calculations. Oh yeah, because it's already at the wheel. But they should have, there should be like boxer engine. Yeah. I think so. I'm trying to, trying to find what's going on right now. Because I know, like, uh, like Briggs and Stratton, they publish their like yeah. um, torque versus RPM. And I don't know, maybe yeah, I, I boxer do. engine torque versus RPM. And we might just have to deal with like a, all right, so here's torque. Is this at the wheel? Um. <coughs> this one's a go westy. Like I don't think it's the Subaru, oh, okay. but. All right, but um, all right, so I'll try to find like the stock values for that and then I can make like a plot of like the different curves. Yeah, and what I was going to say is, like, we don't have to super WRX. We don't have to get, like, the exact engine. Because they all have the same kind of curve. Yeah, that it, it, it's all, like, mildly different. Mm -hmm. But if you can if you can get the, the analysis done for any curve, then you could plug in a new curve and, okay. and still get the same results. All right, that sounds good. I'll work on that. Right. Thanks. Yeah, engine speed. So I wanted to check in. Does is anyone having trouble like giving feedback to someone? Like, is anyone not giving feedback to anyone right now? Like, can I help get? Or do you not like have something to show yet? So everyone's like giving feedback to someone else today? Okay, good, that's great. If you're not, that's okay, but I just wanna help you do that <laughs> so that we can like finish out the course. <laughs> Is anyone online? So we have like Michael. Are you able to get onto the Google Drive online? And I have, I have the document. Okay, yeah, so Michael's good. Anybody else online have questions? Because you should be able to get into that Google Drive folder and find like somebody that you can give some feedback there to. Only a few up here so so far. Meredith. So with the four bar linkage, uh, a lot of the analysis is just like kinematic, okay. right? Because we're just, all we care about is like where points are connected mm -hmm. and, and how they move like yeah. relative to each other. Okay. Um, as far as like the actual, like what's causing that motion, um, uh, what would it be, for bike? Yeah, yeah. So you kind of have like a torque being applied like here, and, this would and like a force. This right? the sequence here. Yeah, and that one, that one you can't like apply. Like your butt's not applying force here. Right. So right. there's no like forces. Yep. Um, overall, I would just call it since this one's like the crank arm. Mm -hmm. I would just say like your body is producing a torque at yep. that point, and that's probably okay. like a good start for this kind of. Okay, so I can probably just show this section of the next one, just like have a little explanation of like what's going on. Yeah. And then yep. give feedback. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, my body is using this. Yeah, because for the most part, it's you've got like a, you've got some kind of rolling resistance that you're overcoming by inputting a torque. Right. Yeah. And like if you use like a, the advanced kind of power meters for bikes, mm -hmm. all they do is track how much torque you're applying to the pedals. Yeah. Yeah, they're not worried about like quad 
versus it's just overall. Like, yeah, it's just like overall. Energy. Like if you have a torque applied over, like every if you have a torque applied through an angle, mm -hmm. that's input energy. Okay. So then it usually does like an overall like energy per time defined. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then for I was thinking of using like this pin set. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, so what I this is obviously a little different. So it's going to kind of like turn this this way, but like yeah, you could turn it sideways if you want. Like you could draw your own. Like you already have that right. that image. Um, right. Yeah. So you you've got like a nice diagram already. Yeah. You can you can reference this since the code is all built on yeah. that diagram. But yeah. Do you know how I would like rotate kind of that one? Kind of turn it, like would I have to change any of these? These wouldn't change really. Right. Um, it's the same as the uh, yeah. The only thing that's really changing is like, I mean, the the lengths right. are all changing, but right. those those you're measuring. Yep. And dx is kind of small, right? You've got a small dx, but a big dy. Right. And that's that's the main thing that changes. Okay. So here, do you actually do this, and do that, and do this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess fine. yeah. The way that you wrote it, dx is up that way. Is that right? Yeah. I mean. I mean, you know, you can do it either. You can do it either way, though. Yeah, if you want to maintain like so that's what would change. X and Y like that. Yeah, because obviously in this one, mm -hmm. this is like the pinion for DX, not DY, and it's horizontal. You know, yeah. It would be vertical, so that's what makes it different. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So if you're looking at another project, have you come up with any like questions? Like what do you mind if I pull up maybe Meredith? Is that all right? So let's take a look here. Oh yeah, yeah, with Gwen. Oh poor Gwen. Spider Man's. Some people say like that's Spider-Man's like real love is Gwen Stacy. Um, but anyway, all right. So we've got free body diagram and kind of the why of like what's going on. Like it's interesting kind of problem of like there's there's a comic book big comic book event and like really changes the course of Spider-Man history and just trying to understand like what are the physics behind this sort of thing. Um, and free body diagram, I mean, there's the only thing supporting someone free falling once the web is attached. We have like tension from the web and like that MG of the, the person falling down. So if, as I'm reviewing this, I would like come over here and say, like, what is a kinetic diagram? Like how is how is that mass times acceleration? How does that play into tension and mg? And then so that'd be like one thing to say. And then over here, like for tension, is this constant or does
So I could say like, is is the tension like is the web being considered like a rigid, like almost like a stainless steel cord? Even stainless steel like stretches whenever you're building like bridges and stuff. You have to account for, and it stretches by a lot. Like the longer something is, the bigger it can stretch. So is is the string being considered like a rigid support or is it a stretchy support? So those would be like my kind of questions that I would ask here. What kind of questions are you asking? Who opened up someone else's work? What are you looking at? What kind of questions do you have? Yeah. Talking to a public who might not understand, there's some language that I would change in there. Yeah. And that's what I recommend. Okay. So some ling so like in as part of the why, like somehow somehow the the why sometimes like language. Yeah. 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 And and they're like building up some of the why or the background. Um, so even coming back to like like uh, Gwen here, I'm trying to see. Like maybe even in this part, like for the setup, we could say like wh when does this happen or or like what reference is this? Because it, it's happened in a lot of different mediums. Like it happened in Spider Man. Two or wait, what was that? Yeah, Amazing Spider-Man Two, and then it also there was also like a scaled down version of it in I think Spider-Man Two, right? Didn't wasn't there a Gwen Stacy receptionist in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man? I think so, but nothing happened. It was not it was not like a big like devastating event. Um, or the comic books, like is it referring to comic book, movie, but like what, where's the reference, like where's the background material for that? All, all of this is just being tracked, I mean I say tracked in, in this Google Drive folder, so you adding, adding comments um, to that so as long as you have like some some kind of rough draft inside here and you're adding some comments to someone else's rough draft like that that's what counts as the homework for this one. My own rough draft with their comments and their rough draft with my comments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean or yeah yeah but somehow like just have some digital digital record of like yes I, I added comments to this. Yeah, so so you could like put those two PDFs. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, and there, for this project, I, there's not like a separate submission. It's just we're just creating some shareable content here in this folder. Um, so there's not there's not like a formal like Google assignment submission process. Yeah, yeah. So you can find that through. It should be like shared with you. But if you uh, go into the classwork, there's a link for that module five. Webs don't fall as fast as humans. But they, they have pressure behind them, <laughs> right? They should fall faster.
you should get faster, like the web should shoot down faster than the human because it's got like some kind of pressure pushing it outwards and it has an initial speed. So it should fall faster because if you throw something downwards, that's going to hit the ground faster than dropping something. Sorry, I'm just having a discussion with, uh, with YouTube. What? Yeah, you might not be able to like carry that. Because I think it kind of starts off as a fluid. So you have like rho gh plus 1 half rho v squared plus p. That Bernoulli, Bernoulli equation. Does anyone has anyone taken fluid mechanics yet? Fluid mechanics. It's like a semester of energy balance with Bernoulli's equation. This is a work energy equation where you're saying it's just work energy divided by volume, and now you've got the Bernoulli equation. But you could say rho g h plus one half v squared plus p equals a constant. So initially, when the web fluid's a liquid inside the container, you have a high pressure, and you release that, change all that pressure into kinetic energy, like V squared, and then it's being converted into like rho GH as it goes either up or down. That's how I would, that's how I would model Spider-Man's web fluid coming out. You could probably get a, a number for how much pressure is in there. I think it's like an absurdly high pressure like shooting, because he's usually like shooting them up like, I don't know, 30 stories or something. That's a big pressure head. At least I think it's a big pressure head. Well, it is, it would be like a, like, you know, silly string, like whenever you release silly string. Um, I mean, technically it is pushing, because there is a pressure pushing the fluid out that way, there is some force pushing it this way. The thing that I would be worried about is having, like, let's say there's 500 PSI inside the web fluid and then it explodes. Now you've got a 500 psi bomb all being released, like on your wrist. So it it would blow your hand right off. Yeah. Spider-Man's super strong, so maybe it would just leave some scars. But yeah. it, it's hard. <laughs> it's it's not a good day to have like super pressurized fluids. They're hard to work with. Yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. So again, main thing today is just getting some kind of digital, digital history that you're providing some feedback on Wednesday. Try to respond with like some updates to, to what you're working on. And that'll be, yeah. Thanks again. Thanks for joining, Michael. <laughs> you too.